Hello, my name is Ali Wasik, and at the time of this recording, I was a PGY2 cardiology pharmacy resident at the University of Maryland School of Pharmacy. Today, I wanted to share with you a brief overview of left ventricular assist devices, also known as LVADs, used in the management of advanced heart failure for those who may not be familiar with the terminology used or the medications used to prevent complications. So you may be asking yourself a few questions. What is an LVAD? A left ventricular assist device is a durable form of mechanical circulatory support that has become increasingly used as the number of patients with heart failure continues to rise and the number of available donor organs does not meet this need. Who may be a candidate? Well, according to the International Society for Heart and Lung Transplant, patients should be considered for LVAD if they have severe, unrecoverable left ventricular function and a left ventricular ejection fraction of less than 25% despite optimal medical therapy. These are patients whose advanced heart failure may be complicated by renal or hepatic dysfunction that is due to poor perfusion and or congestion. These same patients may or may not be dependent on inotrope therapy or other forms of temporary mechanical support to maintain end organ perfusion. And finally, why would we use these devices? These devices are used as a bridge to transplant therapy or as destination therapy, meaning the patient would like to live with the device for the rest of their life, and if so, it is used to improve and maintain their quality of life, and these patients are usually not candidates for transplant. While a number of LVAD devices are in use, they all share the same basic concepts. The inflow cannula is inserted into the apex of the left ventricle. Blood then enters the pump and is delivered to the ascending aorta by means of the outflow cannula. This works in parallel to the native heart with the aortic valve opening based on intrinsic contraction of the heart. A drive line is connected to an external controller with battery packs the patient must have with them at all times. Now the technology associated with the LVAD design has improved tremendously over time. We now have much smaller devices that don't occupy the abdominal cavity which decreases the risk for infection. The LVAD settings are set by the VAD operators to optimize left ventricular unloading to improve cardiac output. You may hear the following terms used to describe the hemodynamic state of an LVAD patient. Speed in revolutions per minute is the only parameter that the VAD operators have direct control over. A speed is chosen, is chosen at which the patient is not symptomatic with respect to their heart failure while also allowing the aortic valve to open. This means that the native heart is also contributing to cardi cardiac output on top of what the VAD is supporting. Flow in liters per minute reflects cardiac output and can also be affected by systemic blood pressure and blood viscosity through the LVAD itself. Power in watts is the direct measurement of energy required by the device to pump blood at the set RPM. Any deviations from these settings may result in alarms on the VAD controller and should be communicated to the patient's LVAD team immediately. So you may be wondering what types of medications these patients would be on. The long-term management of these patients matches that of the patient with heart failure with reduced ejection fraction. Diuretic agents are useful for the management of volume during LVAD support. Beta blockers, angiotensin converting enzyme inhibitors, angiotensin receptor blockers and aldosterone antagonists should still be used to reverse left ventricular remodeling and support right ventricular function. Additionally, the implantation of an LVAD increases the risk for a thromboembolic event. The patient becomes hypercoagulable due to increased inflammation, contact and tissue factor initiated coagulation, as well as platelet activation. For this reason, Warfarin is a mainstay of therapy with an INR goal of 2 to 3, and aspirin is used to prevent the platelet involvement in thrombus formation. Bleeding is the most common complication after LVAD implantation, with common sites early on being surgical site, and then more gastrointestinal bleeding with chronic management. Infections can affect post-surgical patients, such as pneumonia or urinary tract, to just name a few but the more concerning infect infections affect the LVAD components itself, including the pump in the driveline. Pump thrombosis refers to thrombus within the pump itself or the outflow cannula, which can lead to circulatory failure if left untreated. And finally, stroke can be divided into ischemic or hemorrhagic, both related, potentially related to subtherapeutic or supertherapeutic range of warfarin. Although the management of these complications varies, 
Early recognition and treatment are essential to prevent further morbidity and mortality. While you may not work with these devices each and every day, I'm sure you will see them in your practice. I hope this video gave you an introduction to what patients these devices might be useful in, the terminology used to describe them, medications used, and some of the complications that patients may present with. A clinical pharmacist often is and should be involved in the multidisciplinary team to manage antithrombotic therapy while minimizing the risk for pump thrombosis and GI bleeding, up titrating guideline directed therapy for heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, while optimizing fluid status and blood pressure to improve hemodynamics in an LVAD patient. Thank you for listening to my overview on LVAD management. If you are interested in learning about other cardiovascular topics, please subscribe to our YouTube channel.